Good evening. Welcome to the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this evening is Father Okomo, and the gifts will be brought up by Joe and Julaine Onoro. Today is our kickoff of the blessings of the parish ministries. We thank the staff and the parish councils and commissions for their commitment and dedication to our parish. Next week is Catechetical Sunday at all masses. If you are serving as a catechist or a school teacher, next week is your turn for commissioning. The Faith Formation Program's Information Day on Sunday, September 12th, will be via Zoom at 1 p.m. instead of in person. You are inquiring or have questions about our children's and youth programs, first sacraments or confirmation, please join us. There will be a bilingual rosary prayer every Sunday from 9.40 to 10.10 in the church. Come and join us. You are all invited to our parish with dedication and consecration of the church and altar on September 26 from noon to 12 from noon to 2:30 p.m. You haven't experienced a blessing of the church before. This is your opportunity. Space is limited. Please RSV to Kathy in the parish office. Finally, due to the pandemic, we are discouraging congressional singing. Thank you for your cooperation. In this pandemic season, let us continue to pray the prayer that Pope Francis has given us. Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the foot of the cross you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, the salvation of the Roman people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that as you did at Cana at Galilee, joy and feasting will, might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. For he took upon himself our sufferings and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas. We who are put to the test and deliver us from every danger or glorious and blessed virgin. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
My friends, this or today, as our country marks 20 years since the terrorist attacks on September 11, we gather to remember and mourn those who died. In a special way, we honor the many first respondents who put themselves into harm's way to bring others safety. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, coming together as one God's people with confidence, let us acknowledge our failures and ask for the Lord's forgiveness for his full of gentleness and compassion. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ of mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins. Everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon us, O oh God, and ruler of all things, that we may feel the workings of your mercy. Grant that we love you in all our heart, with all our hearts, through our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebel. Turn back. I gave my back to those who beat me, cheek to those who cut my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. He disputes my right. Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. He will prove me wrong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice in supplication because he has inclined his ears to me the day i call the cords of death encompass me the snares of the netherworld cease upon me i fell into distress and sorrow and I call upon the name of the Lord, O oh Lord, save my life. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord and just. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low and he saved me. For he has freed my soul from death. My eyes from the tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living.
A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says that he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading taken from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. <clears throat> you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, no, Jesus and his disciples set out for the village of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. <clears throat> and he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, you are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and said, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, because you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Whoever wishes to be saved his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to be with you uh, this afternoon uh, trying to pray together and uh, singing and breaking bread together. This past week was a little bit difficult for me 
Why? Because in my home country, it was the opening week of students going to universities, colleges, and high schools. And um, when I woke up on Monday, there were more than 10 requests for school fees or for tuition. And I was able only to help my two nephews who just joined university and um, two nieces who joined high school. And after that, many more requests came. But because I was not to help, I said, God bless you. Probably you will find help somewhere else. And my phone was off until this morning. Another more than 10 requests for tuition. I said to myself, why are they asking for me? They know I'm a priest and I live in America. Therefore, I have plenty. It's difficult sometimes. Many times at this community, during the time when I go home, a good number of you come to me and tell me, do you need cloth to take home? Do you need crayons to take home? Do you need some little money to take home? Probably you might help somebody who is in need. I take things and I give to those who I need. Why do people come to me and ask me that? Because they want to care? Because they want to help? Because they want at least other people to feel helped and cared for. Think of those moments you have been able to help somebody with food, sometimes even with change, and sometimes even with only prayer and saying, I pray for you, or I'll pray for you, or I pray for your success. Think about that. Think of those moments you have helped and those moments you have not been able to help. Reflect on what we heard from the second letter today that we were read for. He says, somebody comes to you, has no food, has no clothes, and you say, good, be warm out there. He continues to teach and says, faith could be useless without good works and good deeds. How do I live out my faith? How do I reach out to those who do not have anything? How shall I in this world be able to care for somebody else who have no food, shelter, clothing? Go back and read that letter. It speaks to me and it spoke to me and I said, Oh no, why did they come to me asking? They knew probably I could be able to help a little. And then I said, but why did I switch off my phone? Because I did not want to be disturbed anymore. My friends, you cannot say I have faith. You cannot say I am a believer. You cannot say that. You cannot be proud before others and say that if you cannot See the face of God in that young man who is begging, who is asking for something, in that student who is looking for tuition, in that person who is looking for care, in that somebody outside there in homes who is looking for affirmation. My faith will be dead if I cannot be able to reach out to those who are in different types of needs. 
That's what the second reading is telling me. And it spoke to me when I looked at it um, uh, this week, throughout this week, and also to me today. Now, what shall I do? Jesus is giving us something very important today in the gospel. He wanted to know if people knew him. And he wanted to know if his disciples knew him. So he posed a question that he poses to us every day. What do you hear about me? What do people say about me? They all answered. Some people say you are John the baptizer. Somebody said, oh, one of the prophets, Elijah, and all these. They answered well because that's what people thought. The perception of all peoples, like who is this man? Then in the end, he narrowed down to his disciples who had been taught by him, who had been touched by him, who had been fed by him many times, and who had called them who I am to you. Who is Jesus to you? My friends, that question should be present, should be in our ears in a loud voice. You as a person, not even as your family, you as a person, who is my Jesus to me? Jesus is the one who was humiliated, who humbled himself, whose body was mangled, whose legs were broken, who was pierced and went to the cross because of me, because of others, because of the salvation of the people. So let me know Jesus. Let me not only know something about Jesus, even a Muslim knows something about Jesus. I was talking to a friend of mine, he came by my house yesterday, he's a Muslim, but he said, when I did CRE, that's a religion, I got an A. He knows something about Jesus, but he doesn't personally know Jesus. So you and I who believe, who have been baptized in Jesus, we have to know Jesus. So today, as the gospel continues, he says something very important. When Peter rebuked him and said, never, God forbid, nothing will happen to you. What did Jesus say? He called him Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. Because Jesus, you know, when he tried to go and do something for the salvation of the world, Peter came, he was a human person, so he came to rebuke him. Get behind me. So let us turn around today, and what is it that I want to tell myself that should get behind me. Maybe I'm full of hate. Maybe I'm full of unforgiving nature. Maybe I'm full of resentment. Maybe I'm full of jealousy. Yes, I'm jealous about others. Maybe I think evil about others. Maybe I've not taken care of myself. What is it that I can say, get behind me in my life because I want to march, I want to go to God. And when I go to God, Jesus is going to challenge me today and be saying, if you want to be my disciples, two disciples, think twice. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. What is to deny yourself? What is the cross? The cross of Jesus. So many things, so many challenges that we endure in this world, in our church, in our community. Those are the crosses. If we want to be true disciples, we have to bear the cross of Jesus. We have to bear each other. We have to bear the pain of following Jesus, the son of the living God. Friends, let us be gentle. Let us be kind. And let us act as he acted, as he gave up himself to be taken to the cross. I believe in one God.
taking up the cross, we turn to God with our prayers. That Christians may sit patiently with those who are negotiating whether to carry the cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That laws created by legislatures may be just and might not take and might not place unnecessary burdens on people, especially the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That doctors and nurses may listen carefully to their patients and not create rushed solutions to their problems. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have shared the cross may not be afraid to pick it up again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill and suffering, especially Terry Maynard, Melissa Rossi, Jim Otis, and Greg Babineau, that our loving Father will strengthen their faith and trust in his goodness and divine providence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead who have fallen asleep in Jesus Christ, especially Barbara Rasmussen, sister of June Camus, Stefano Pacini, Brian Kelly, Linda Cornell, Jerry Jennings, and those who died from the September 11th tragedy may share in his glorious resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That God will hear our prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Through Christ, Lord.
Pray now that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that word each has offered to honor your majesty may serve the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give them the Lord our God. It's to be right and just and our duty and our salvation always and ever to give you thanks, Lord Holy, Almighty and Eternal. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that people formed as one by the unity of Trinity may the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to praise your manful wisdom be manifest as a charge. And so in the company and the choirs of heaven of angels, we praise you as with one voice we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, took the chalice once more, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence to minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, and Bishop Isabio and all your people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, Lord, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, our most chaste spouse, all the apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the same command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, Lord, on our sins, but with the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. <clears throat> Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, body and blood of Christ, give us peace for eternal life. Amen. Amen. For those who are unable to receive communion, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the workings of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and law and bodies so that its effects are not our own desires may always prevail in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As leaders and members of staff, council and commissions are identified, please stand and remain standing as you are joined by other groups in acknowledgement of your commitment and good works. Will those who serve our parish as members of the staff, the pastoral council, the finance council, the stewardship commission, the school commission, the liturgy commission, intercultural commission, and the justice and peace commission, please stand and remain standing. We ask the rest of us to extend our hands and pray for them. Loving God, you give us faith as a means to the Son we have joined together here today to demonstrate to you and our brothers and sisters in faith at St. Thomas More Church that we hear you are called to serve you. These are no small tasks in your vineyard. Each and every effort we make are individual is made in communion with our entire community. Each task receives value by your grace upon those who give and those who receive. Inspire each of us to know that genuine faith in you and in your son is expressed by our love and commitment to each other. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Our response is, Lord, bless your faithful people. Please remain standing. For our parish leaders, staff, pastoral council, finance council, stewardship commission, school commission, liturgy commission, and intercultural commission. We, pr we pray that they may have the gifts of good judgment, openness to all, courage and fortitude to discern your will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless your faithful people. Loving and gracious God, we are blessed and we thank you for the rich and richness you place in our lives. Fill our hearts with gratitude so that we may joyfully share our wondrous gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Help us to be ever mindful of the needs of our parish family. Teach us to be good and faithful stewards. Show us how to take good care of each other and the world that you have entrusted to us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you for the service you render to this community. Now, just to say thank you to you all for being here, my friends. And uh, we start from the women who do the flowers and sacristians. We say thank you so much for the work that you do here behind the curtains. And uh, move on to these wonderful ladies, these wonderful girls who today have helped me on the altar. We say thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We need many more, many more. And to... Diane and Rodney for providing good music for us tonight. We say thank you, thank you. And um, those who read, lectors, Eucharistic ministers, ushers, and all of us, we say thank you for choosing St. Thomas More as your home. And indeed, it's your home. 
We love you and we value you and we appreciate you. Lastly, do we have any of us who are visiting with us for the first time? Or first time in a long time from another parish, from uh, outside state, or right here? Where are you visiting from? Welcome from Syracuse. And we hope you come again to visit with us. Any more visitor? Okay, I just heard when I was um, in the Saxon best thing to come for mass, that beautiful announcement about the rededication of our newly remodeled church and our new altar here that will happen on 26th of this month at um, noon. The Archbishop will be here way before noon, but the mass will start at noon. So those of us who have never witnessed that, the re a, a dedication or rededication of a church and altar, please, we ask you to make reservations because there are so many people who want to, to attend. Uh, so if you want to make a reservation through Kathy at the parish office, and then you will have a seat reserved for you. And thank you for all who really made sure that this space is made into a wonderful looking space of prayer. Next week, same time, same place. Please rise. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you always, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go forth in the peace of Christ, glorifying God by our life. Have a good evening.